It is the heart of the holy month of Ramadan. Like the way we are told, Surah we are seen is the heart of the holy Quran. In the sense that it gives us the summary of what the Holy Quran carries of message. The same thing applies to Laylatul Qadr. We are inshallah fasting maybe for 29 days or 30 days. All this night and this because of one night only. Night of Qadr. That's it. All the amal coming iftar, salatul jama'ah during the holy month of Ramadan, salatul layl when I go back home, what lies for one thing? To get the opportunity to be blessed by Allah on the night of Qadr. So that's one. Number two, mu'minin and mu'minat. You see, Allah says in the Holy Quran, You insan, you are my Khalifa on earth. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa. The Khalifa is not Adam. Adam represented insan. The Khalifa is insan in general. But who is the true Khalifa of Allah? Is the one who represents each and every attribute of Allah in his or her life. Allah is Rahman. Rahman manifests in your life and you become a source of peace for people around you. Allah is Razak like that. When do I begin with that? The best time to begin with that is the night of Qadr. Why? Because the night of Qadr, the doors of heaven are wide open. When we say door of doors of heaven, we're talking of Allah's blessings and how easy it is to gain Allah's proximity through the night of Qadr. That's number two. Number three points before we go to the traditions. You see, brothers and sisters, we came to this world for what? Think about it. Did we come to this world to gain degrees? Did we come to this world to become famous? I want, to, I want us to think about something, yeah? Which will all connect it with Laylatul Qadr. Why am I here? I'm here for one reason. To achieve perfection. Illa liya'buduni. What is Perfection. To feel Allah's presence wherever I may be in my life. Best time to begin that journey is Laylatul Qadr. Allah. It's not difficult. Because the hearts are soft. And I'll tell you, inshallah, how I will suggest what we need to do, inshallah, later. Imam Ali said, We are created to go back to Allah. Look at the ayah. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. First meaning of this ayah talks about death. But there is a very deep mystical meaning to this ayah. That inna lillah is descending arrow. We've all descended from Allah. Wa inna ilayhi ra, we are ascending to Allah. How do we ascend to Allah? We are not of the same level. All of us here, we are of different level. Some are still 
in what they call the alam nasuti materialistic world. Meaning what? They are completely absorbed by the materialistic world. We're still all in this world. Some they are in what they call alamul mithal. Sometimes affected by materialistic world and sometimes affected by the divine world. Some know they are what they call alamul uqul, intellectual world. Meaning what? They are not affected at all. They are able to manage this materialistic world. That journey of ascending to Allah begins easily during the night of Qadr. The night of Qadr is important. And Imam Ali said, Inama hiya nafsi urawiduha bitakwa. This my nafs, there is only one thing I do about it. Tomorrow, inshallah, we're discussing the mystical worship of Imam Ali at night. But Imam Ali is saying, this my nafs, there's only one thing I do about it. I train it to get used to taqwa. I, Ali, train it. When does that begin? The best way? Shah Ramadan, in the holy night of Qadr. So Qadr is important. It's powerful. Now, mu'minin and mu'minat, you know Qadr, is the last level of Allah's Mashiach. You know Mashiach? Mashiach. Mashiach simply means in a simple term. Allah's will, irada, how he decides things. There are so many levels. You've got Arsh, you've got Kursi, and you've got Qadr, Qadr wa Qadr. Arsh, Kursi, all these, they are not physical things. They are zones of Allah's power. Mm. We don't believe Allah has a throne or a chair because Allah is not a matter that has weight and occupies a space. I may have a throne, I may have a chair. This Kursi, this Arsh, they are how Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala exert his power. So, mystics say, Qadr is the last level. Meaning what? At Qadr, Allah just decides. He decides. Ali Rajani wants to get married, not you, the other Rajani. Because you're married, otherwise I, don't, I want Lester to invite me again. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get married on the night of Qadr stamped. If you don't get it, Wallahi, it's simply because it's not in your maslaha. Night of Qadr, there is no if or but. It's akhir maratib mashiatillahi azza wa jal. That's the last level. It's kun fayakun. As Qadr. Now let's go deeper into this tradition. You know very well. Night of Qadr is such powerful because of one thing. Quran was revealed. Not because of fasting. Fasting will come later. Quran was revealed. This is a separate discussion. When we have the Quran discussion, maybe you can look into that, inshallah. First stage to the existence of Quran is Lawhi Mahfuz. Or Kitabu Maknun. There, Quran was languageless. No size. Realities with Allah Haqqaiq. Second state to the existence of the Quran is the heart of the Prophet. Those realities Allah brought all down to the heart. Nazala bikin ruhul amin ala qalbi Quran said. Litakuna min al mundirin bilisani arabi yimmubi. So Allah sent down the realities of the Holy Quran. 
And scholars, they call that inspirational revelation. Prophet was inspired by the realities of the Quran. That is what makes Laylatul Qadr unique. It's what they call once of revelation. So that's one. It's the night of Nuzul al Quran. Number two, or the next point. Laylatul Qadr is night of Nuzul al Malaikati wa Ruh. Inshallah, before the third Qadr, I think my topic of lecture is some of this. But definitely, I will not repeat what I'm saying here, inshallah. Malaika are coming. But what is interesting is the Ruh. Ruh is not Malaika. Imam Jafar was asked, is this Ruh Malaika? He said, no, 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 no. Makhlukuna a'dhamu min al-malaika. It's a creature greater than malaika. You know what is wrong? Every prophet, messenger, imam became ma'asum because of a ruh. So, you build your spirituality, you get to that level, Allah become happy, he sent you ruh. You cut Isa Jesus. Allah says, Wa ayyadinahu bi ruhi al-qudus. Ruh al-qudus here, the Holy Spirit is not referring to Jibra'il. It's a special creation of Allah. So on the night of Qadr, Allah will send the ruh to each and every one of us. If you want to go higher in your spirituality, Wallah, ruh is there for you to take you higher. We have ruh al-iman, we have ruh al-yaqeen, we have different ruhs in our lives. So that's another part of Laylatul Qadr, the ruh and malaika comes. The next point, on the night of Qadr, as you know, everything is possible. Literally everything is possible. Chapter Dukhan, verse 3 and 4 discuss this. Yufraku kullu amrin hakim. Every good thing happens. So that's the day you need to go full force. Jump into it. Call on Allah. Insist. Insist on that night. Because Allah promises in Quran. Whatever you want, so long as it's lawful, we are more than capable to give you on that night. And then the last point before we go to tradition is salam. Salam simply means what? Angels will ask for forgiveness on your behalf. Right from the beginning of the night until the end of the night. They will sit next to you, the angels. But now look at this tradition, man. I, I found these traditions really very fascinating, yeah? Musa, alayhi salam, Prophet Musa. Said, Ya Allah, grant me your proximity. I want to be close. Proximity, as I said, is to feel the presence of Allah. Inshallah, we'll discuss more tomorrow. Allah revealed to Musa. You may get. But my utmost proximity is for the one who keeps night vigil on the night of Qadr. Who keep awake. Number two, Musa said to Allah, Ya Allah, grant me your mercy. Allah revealed to Musa. Said, my mercy is for the one who show mercy to poor on the night of Qadr. Musa is asking Allah. Then the third one, look at the third one. Very fascinating also. Musa asked Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, show me what to do so that on the day of Qiyamah I pass by Poli Serat easily. Allah said, it is for the one who spent the night of Qadr doing what? Look at the line. Look at the line. It's a very beautiful line in the tradition, yeah? The one who gives general sadaqah on the night of Qadr. I will make him pass by police serat easily. Musa was not done. He said, yeah, Allah. I want a tree in heaven. What do I do? He said, tree in heaven is for the one who at least 
out of all that he recites on the night of Qadr, say Subhanallah. Saying only Subhanallah on the night of Qadr, Allah said to Musa, I'll build a tree for you in Jannah. So you can imagine the A'mal, he's going to do a lot of A'mal. And then the last one, Musa asked Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, Ya Khuda, O oh Allah, I just want your pleasure. I want you to be happy with me. Allah revealed to Musa, my happiness is easily achieved on the night of Qadr by the one who just offered two rak'at salah. Subhanallah. Yesterday you did two rak'ah. Tomorrow, inshallah, you're going to do. The third night, you're going to even do more. Allah sent to Musa, I will be pleased with anyone who offers two rak'at salat on the night of Qadr. And then in conclusion, before we go to your questions, the Holy Prophet said in the tradition, look at this tradition, I'm just quoting. Allahu Akbar. Whoever on the night of Qadr offers just one sajda, Allah will build a place for him in heaven. Sajda. It's tradition of the Prophet in our life. Sajda. And Ayatollah Taharani, Aga Buzurk Taharani, mystic, he discussed this beautifully. And then he said, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Whoever does a rak'ah on the night of Qadr, Allah will build a house for him in heaven. But I know sometimes we need our dunya. Prophet said in the tradition, look at the tradition. Whoever praises Allah by saying subhanallah wa alhamdulillah on the night of Qadr, his legitimate desires will be fulfilled by Allah. How do I prepare for this night? That's the question we all have. I want to make the best. Remember, it's the night of Allah's budget. It's budgetary night. Allah is going to say, Lester Jamaat will do this next year. Lester Jamaat will have this next year. Balaya, Manaya, everything are going to be decided. Calamities, disasters, problems, issues. It's like when the, the chancellor goes to the House of Commons to deliver his budget. Of business people, employers, employees, everybody tune. Whether you like them or not, you're going to listen to what the guy is going to say. Whether there is going to be boost for NHS or <laughs> national insurance, is go there's going to be a cut or something. Yeah. So the same thing on the night of Qadr. So narration says, Nime Shaban, night of 19, night of 21st, night of 23rd, and night of the 27th. Don't give them chance. Spend the night vigil. Allah makes his budget. So if you ask me practically, what is it that I do? I refer you to the hadith of the prophet and Imam Jafar said all are accepted on the night of Qadr except the following people. They are, their du'as will not be accepted. <laughs> Allah Prophet said, Imam Jafar said. He said all will be accepted. So don't worry. Be yourself. Go there. Chill. Talk to God. Do the amal. Relax. But there are categories of people no matter how they scream on that night, they will not be accepted by Allah. Number one, if your parents are not happy with you. Unless if your parents, of course, they are doing it intentionally. That's something else we can discuss. But Allah, if your parents are not happy with you, forget about Laylatul Qadr. Just go there, kiss their feet, and ask them for forgiveness. Because if you've done something wrong to them intentionally. Go kiss their feet. Please, mommy, make it work for me. Better than coming to spend three hours here. So that's why. Number two, Sile Rahim, if you are not in talking terms with any family member, 
Well, I'll go back. So these are the homeworks we need to do, by the way, before tomorrow. Check. Any family member you are not in talking terms? Go back, man, quickly, Habibi, bro. For lying. These are these of the prophet and Imam Jafar. Third, is there any believer you've taken his or her right? But even one tradition I was reading, not just a believer, hukuku nas. People you gossiped about. Go back to them. Please, I once gossiped about you in the mosque. Forgive me. Tomorrow is Ayatollah Kaza. I don't like, of course, it's a good thing, but I don't like. People just send a message. It's a big night. Please forgive me. Who is going to forgive? I'm blessed with Omar. Please forgive me. If you mean business, in addition to sending the message, call the person. Or personalize the information. You know what? There was this day in the mosque, I gave you such a look. And it was a bad one. Forgive me. If the person refused to forgive you, Allah will take charge of it. Don't worry. But at least you've done it. So, Hukukun Nas is very, very important. And the last, but certainly not the least here. If there is any sin you know you committed intentionally, pledge Allah to stop before the Amal of Qatar. Say, for example, I know I'm committing this sin in my life. Music. It's a common question you get when you go everywhere. Music. And, and you know, the type of music you listen is really haram, man. Pledge Allah, you're going to stop. Or say, Allah, you know what? I'm struggling. I've been trying, but it's difficult for me. But I'm going to keep trying. It's much better than nothing. Any sin, pledge Allah. I'm going to stop or I'm going to try. Then you get into the A'mal of Qadr. So Prophet said, if you are able to look after this, then Allah, don't worry. Don't worry. Because of only one person who is sincere during A'mal of Qadr, Allah will accept everyone. So I need to offload the baggages you and your wife, you and your children sit tonight or tomorrow say, you know, let's forgive each other. Please, let's forgive each other because I know I'm weak. I'm going to Allah now. This is just one night in a year. Please, wifey, forgive me. John, please forgive me. John, forgive me. You sit with your children better? Please forgive me, man. Please, man. Please. Forgive me. No, no, because a conche. She said, well, forgive me. Because <laughs> I don't want these baggages with me. I don't want. Wallah, this is serious, brothers. Laylatul Qadr is a big deal. It's the biggest deal in Allah's encyclopedia. So I don't want any baggage. I don't want tension. So I'm really going to, you know, take away any pride and face you humbly. Please, mama. Please, please, buddy. Your friend. Please, bro. Please, man. I know there was a day you were wearing a shoe and I laugh at you. Please, bro. It's Layla to Qadr. And the good thing about Islam, if the person doesn't forgive you, don't worry. Go chill. You've done it. Allah will forgive you, man. But you have to be sincere. You must be sincere. So inshallah, this is the introduction I have for you. And I really look forward to your robust questions and engaging so that we can make it the best out of this inshallah. Asante. Thank you, Sheikh, uh, for those uh, enlightening words. Um, definitely lots to take uh, and implement. And I'm hoping people have been taking notes. Uh, inshallah, we can 
implement these for the rest of the night. Uh, before we carry on with the next part of the program, the open q and I'd like to call upon Brother Muhammad Abdullah on behalf of Bethel Society to facilitate this. And inshallah, we can take this forward. Brother Muhammad, Wali Muhammad, salawat. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So the first question we've got is um, one that's been sent online. And somebody has asked, should we hide from our brothers and our friends who are from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that we do la'nat on the first, second, and third caliph and uh, Aisha? Classic. This is, of course, it's an excellent question. But obviously, it has nothing to do with Laylatul Qadr. But maybe you may mention the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam. So obviously, there are different opinions among scholars. So I will share my opinion, which I'm very strong about it. Yeah? When it comes to the love of Al al Bayt, it's non negotiable. We love Al al Bayt. We must, and as I was saying earlier on. But I don't patronize cursing those people in front of the Sunnis. I don't do that. Why? Because I was a Sunni before. I was not a Shia. I was not born a Shia, bro. <laughs> I was a Sunni. It took me so many months, years, to become a Shia. The point is, the one who led me through Allah's guidance to become a Shia, had he started that way, I would have left him. Of course, it's Allah's tawfiq. Maybe I would have left him. Because you see, you hold somebody so dear, and suddenly you hurt someone. How will I feel? I'll feel bad. I will not even entertain you anymore. I'll run away from you. So, obviously, the concept of la'ana is in the Holy Quran. We have teach uh, verses. Lana meaning what? You are, it's a dua. You are asking Allah to deprive someone of Allah's mercy. So lana is not sub, it's not an insult. But obviously not everyone will take it. So therefore I will not go to that extent of cursing someone's holiness or whatever someone reverse in front of that person. I wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. If, if, if they bring it to me, I say, look, I do La'an. I'm not going to run away to say I don't do La'an in Ziyarat Ashura or I don't do La'an on the night of Imam Amir al muminin But I do La'an of those who disobey Allah and Prophet. That's my answer. Because Quran says, Ula'ika yal'anhumullah wa yal'anhumullah. You know, there are a group of people, Allah curses them and the curses curse them. But then if the person wants to push me too much, I'm not interested in that. So I do. May Allah curse the killers of Imam Ali. Do you subscribe to the killer of Imam Ali? That's the question, is it? Okay. Ah, uh, next question. Okay. Yeah, do one from the floor and then one online. One from the floor, yeah. Salam wa rahmatullah. You touched upon something just a second ago, and I was hoping you could elaborate on that. The person who was instrumental to help you, to guide you towards... Yeah, so that will take us completely out of Leila to look at. That's a long we can, one. We can do that later. The only reason I say it is because we all might have some friends who are in the same position, and maybe we could learn from that. But Absolutely. Uh, no, 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 I will, I will definitely indicate to that, man. That's very important. So obviously, as you know, my family, my root is not a Shi'i root, yeah? I'm from Ghana. My father was a Sufi Imam. 
But he passed away when I was very young, maybe less than a year old, yeah? Or so, there and there. I don't know my father. I only know him through photos and what my mother and my grandmom told me. So he was a Sufi sheikh. He was an imam. He was a teacher. So we are four. You know, I have three siblings. So he had a wish that one of his children succeed him. So me being the last born, my grandmom instilled that in me. So then I took the route of preaching. So I started preaching as a Sunni when I was 14 years of age. I led Taraweeh myself. From that age, I led Taraweeh like three times in my life, if I'm not mistaken. I used to lead Taraweeh, big, big number in the mosque. I used to do that. But then we used to receive these books from Ansarian publications, you know. Because you just write PayPal in Africa, people outside, abroad. So they will send you books, pen, sometimes handkerchief or something. So Ansarian used to send me, oh, these are Islamic books. But sometimes we'll read and something things wouldn't make sense. And where would we go? We'd go to our own teachers who used to teach us. So out of those teachers, some of them were really good. They were not biased, you know. So no, is this as she asked, you know, explore, see. So that is what opened the door for us to start exploring. Of course, some will say, no, 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 this is as she asked. You only live for five months up, uh, four months up. Hanafi, Maliki, Ambali, Shafi, the rest, forget about them. Don't worry. So this one who used to say, no, read, explore. There is no problem. He actually was my father's classmate. Big Sheikh. Nice late. He used to say, you know what, go learn and close your ears. You will be labeled by go learn. And he was a top, not Sunni sheikh. Wallahi. So that's how my journey started. Wallahi. And then when I started exploring, I met a Shia gentleman by the name Ahmed. He's a Ghanaian also. He's a sheikh. He also studied in Kof. So he used to guide me. But he used to guide me with humility and humbleness. You know, don't waste your time, no. Allah is showing you something. Spend time, you know Arabic, read about it. Because I learned Arabic, read about it. You will understand it. So they guided me properly. Had that teacher said, you know, no, this, forget it, close this, yes, like the others. Maybe, I don't know, but that's Allah's guidance. I wouldn't have gone into that. And then the last point here, this is a very important point. What really made me to decide so I read for about two years. It was making sense to me. But my, my, my heart was not accepting. My mind was accepting, but my heart, I was debating. But I remember in the Sunnis, they taught us when we were young, whenever you need something, do three days fasting and ask Allah to help you. So I fasted. So on the third night, I dreamt Imam Ali in Kaaba. And Imam Ali, but Ali Bay TV, they had a documentary on this. Imam Ali said, you are looking for something, you found it, stay there. So that was my turning point. And of course, I had Sunni, like my mom Sunni, they supported me, everybody, you know. So that's how. So definitely, I don't, if a Sunni asks me, really, I answer, look, I guess those who disobey Allah, that's it. Um, the next question we have from the ladies is um, we know that Laylatul Qadr has grand importance so why is it that we have differences about not only when Laylatul Qadr is but even between our madajit we have differences about the first of Ramadan which will make an impact on the Laylatul Qadr excellent question excellent question it will not make any impact an excellent question. So, as lovers and followers of Ahl al-Bayt, Ahl al-Bayt explained to us into details as to what all these nights are about. So first we begin with the marjas. It's about the sighting of the moon. It's about the sighting of the moon. Said Sistani, Different teaching, say the Hoi, different teaching, sighting of the moon. 
How do you kill the birds? The birds with one stone. Prophet said, make the best out of all the last ten nights of Ramadan. A prophet Muhammad Shia and Sunni said, last ten nights is not business as usual, Habibi. Last ten nights is serious. Hence, we have tradition from Al Bayt. Each night under the rakat. Tomorrow I'll mention Imam Ali each night thousand rakat used to do. And I'll explain how he used to do it. To such an extent, Prophet encouraged the best out of all the amals of the last ten nights is a takeoff. Of course, minimum days of itikaf is three. But we highly encourage, last 10, Alhamdulillah, you have mosque here. You can do itikaf if you want. You can do itikaf. Stay away from dunya for at least 10 nights. You can do 10 nights, come 3 nights, have the feeling. So, to get away from moon sighting, shinu moon sighting, not sighting. Baki said, Koi, said, Sistani. May Allah prolong his life, inshallah. Last 10 nights, I do every night amal. I can take the small amal by 10, 11, I'm done. So that's how you get away from art. So you don't have any problem, inshallah. But yes, if you go to the tradition of Imam Jafar Sadiq, the strongest possibility is on the night of the 23rd. We have a tradition. But Imam Jafar, because he wanted us to make good use of all the nights, I mentioned. Yesterday here, or during the Amal, night of the 19th is to determine what is it that I want. I want to get married. There is this girl I see, and I saw I want to talk to her, but I don't know how to talk to her. Ya Allah, soften my heart, give me the courage, let me go. But no, 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 this is not the one, man. This is not the one, man. Night of the 21st, you change your mind. You change your mind. And then night of the 23rd, Imam Jafar said, it's Laylatul Imda. That is the night of approval. So the 23rd night is the strongest. So don't worry about your marja say this. Stay, stick to your marja, but make the best out of all the night. Like I give you an example. If you go to London, there's this youth group called Shabab Sipteen. Shabab Sipteen. They every year, what they do, they do six night at man. So if you are on Said Khoi, you part. If you are on Said Sistani, you part. And I will say, you know what? The energy is there. The nur is there. The josh is there. Let's make it the best out of all. Even if the jamaat don't do the amal, you go. But really, if you can do itikaf, solid, man. Solid. So maybe the youth here, mashallah. Of course, with the ladies, itikaf can be challenging sometimes. It can be. But if you can do, why not? But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to push much on the lady side, yeah? But guys, wallah, I'm not, you know, if you can do, this is a mosque. See, guys, we recited here. Yeah? Try it, up, man. You'll never regret, man. So in Birmingham, they are doing, although they don't have mosque, man. So that one is at Ajayl, Matulubiya. So you can have last pleasure, but they don't have a mosque. They are doing it. So in some of you, inshallah, school is closed. School is closed. Uni is closed. Come three nights. Ibadah every night. Discussion during the day. Every, well, uh, the feeling is even you are away from Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, bro. You are away from all those. What's up, these does? Laila, how la 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 you drop on. Somebody should think about this, man. We still have a long way to go, man. Sheikh, um, next question we had was regarding to what you talked about, Silat al Zahra, and the relationships with one's family members, the believers, the people in general. Somebody asked that if somebody has cut the relationship with you because of certain aspects, you know, some people said they're in laws, maybe they don't get along with them. Some people said because they, are, they have converted to the path of the Ahlul Bayt, their family has left them because they've become Shia. 
Are you the one that's responsible then to go towards them and ask them for forgiveness? That's a, that's a very interesting question, man. And all of us, directly or indirectly, sometimes we get tested with such a question. In laws. No, no. Sunni became a Shia, becomes a challenge. What Islam says, you try your level best. Go back. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan Mubarak. If they still not budging, you've done your part. Allah will take care of them. Because, you know, Laylatul Qadr comes once in a year. So I want to be as humble as I can. Go back to them. Islam doesn't say when you become a Shia, you cut off with anyone. Yes, some may cut off with you. I know. I have the experience of this. Go back. You know why? Because Imam Ali says, human beings are enemies of what they are ignorant of. Sometimes some people don't like you not because they don't like you, because they are ignorant of who you are. Of course, some will do it intentionally. But you know, give people excuses, man. Why not? So go back through text, go back through calling, go back through someone. If they still are not interested, don't worry. You've done your part, don't stress yourself. Uh, the next question we have, Sheikh, is. Um, on the floor, if you could. Add do we have a question for you? Anybody from the floor? On the floor? Yeah, Ali You can write it on the Twitter. Okay, there's a question. Big number, man. <laughs> Allah bless you. Give me Jens Alhamdulillah, impress me. Uh, what's the question? You can write if you, yeah. you want to talk. Yeah, it's on the thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Should we take a look? Sheikh, um, obviously we said the Layla to Qadr is the night when Allah's decree is everything happening. Sometimes we get the youths questioning that if that's the night where everything is written, then what's the point of the rest of the year for me to, to act and do good? We get a lot of that question from the youths a lot. No, no, no. Excellent question. Very contemporary question. So please pay attention to this question. Everything is written. Why should I worry? Why should I even bother going to the A'mal? It's not like that. My wife is written, my husband is written, why should I worry, man? I'm not going to look for anyone. I'm not going to sign with a matchmaker and start looking for something. It's written. Because it's written whether I will go to heaven or not. Why is a lot? This Aqidah to Jabr. You know, we have different types of Aqidah. There are Muslims who believe, you know what, everything is written, don't worry. Hakuna Matata, they say in Swahili. Don't worry. Everything is written. So if somebody loves me, it's also written. If I go, may God forbid, I steal. It's written. Then they get stuck. They can't answer that. Imam Jafar Sadiq taught us, alayhi salam, la jabra wa la tafweeda innama al amru bayna al amrain. It is not absolute free will and it is not absolute determinism. It is in between. Meaning what? You also have choices. So what happened on the night of Qadr Habibi? Here is the chancellor with his budget. Now you have various secretaries, cabinet secretaries. They have to lobby the chancellor to get more money. Allah says, you know what? I am here. I am here. Blessings, tick. Marriage, tick. That place, this thing will happen, tick. But you can unlock it the way you conduct yourself. It's the capacity. Not everyone has the capacity. You know, it's like Islam. You know, mystics say, the moment you become a balig, Allah comes to you in full. Some take Allah 1%. Some take Allah 2%. Some take Allah, they wait for Salat. Some take Allah, they wait for Adhan. 
Some take Allah salat will finish and they will do it. Some determine, depending on how they take Allah, they will wait for the entire day to come over before they pray. Some know they will wait for three days. Some they will not even pray at all. Only when they become old, they pray. So blessings are there, but you have to prepare for the capacity. You finish your sixth form. Your results are out. And mashallah, you've gotten the best of universities. Hope go sleep in the university. Go sleep. Student finance will stop. And you will fail this money. That's how Allah operates. All the lecturers are at the uni. Student finance pay for your accommodation. Sometimes you even get extra in your pocket, depending on where you live. Are you going to chill, coffee every day, not study? No. Allah said everything is at your doorstep. But you need to earn it. And how do you earn it? Cleanse the heart. That's it. Pray. Don't have hatred of anyone. Don't intentionally take someone's right. And the rest are for you. Allah is not asking too much. It's for our own benefit. Sent. Next question. Shaykh, okay, we have a question from the ladies. She has asked, um, during these important nights of Qadr, um, <coughs> how do you parent your child during these important nights? She says that I'm unable to hold the Quran on my head because I'm busy, you know, looking after my children and whatnot. So how do I balance my parenting or how do I? Lovely question, man. Lovely, lovely question. I will say to that parent, don't worry at all. Don't worry. You see, there are two schools of thoughts. I buy, I subscribe to one. The other one, I don't subscribe to it. And I know today there are many people who love the other one. So no, don't worry about A'mal, no big deal. Don't do A'mal. No, I don't subscribe to that. Loving A'mal doesn't mean being traditional. A'mal are means of communicating with Allah. Some of these A'mals are from the Ahl al-Bayt. They understood the existence of Allah than any one of us. So they tailored it in such a way that it will make life easier for us. So I subscribe to the school of thought that there must be a amal. Otherwise, everybody will be lingering around. No order, no structure. But it's not a must to finish all the amal. Don't feel under pressure. No, 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 no. I know sometimes some of us, of course, mosque, we have to do the amal. But if you feel tired, you can stand on your feet while the amal is going on and you are doing the amal. You want to take a little bit of break. I'm not prom promoting that. But you want to take, because you're tired, fatigue. Go, come, because you want to do the amal with the josh, with the feeling and everything. As a mother, looking after your children is the greatest amal. Online. It's Ibadah. Bibi Fatima, salam Allah, alayhi, narration tells us, she used to send Asanayn to the A'amal of Qadr in the mosque of the Prophet. I read that in a riwaya. She was not only sending them to go and see to where Quran is being recited. A'amal Laylat al-Qadr. Narration says she would make them sleep during the day. So they don't sleep early at night of Qadr. But regardless, if your sons and daughters, you need to keep them, you don't put the Quran, don't worry. Don't worry. Your niya is the most important. That is jihad. Oh, you have a father, a mom, they are old. You're looking after them, they are ill. They need you more. Your amal is taken care of by Allah Tabaraka wa Allah, don't worry. I know sometimes, even myself, sometimes I feel, you know what? 
I'm not there, this Amal, I'm not there. No, 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 no. Allah is not like that. Allah is not in that type of a business. The heart you come to Allah is more important to Allah. If the opportunities are there to do the amal, why not? If beyond your control, even if you get a few minutes of amal, no, no, you're sitting in the amal with the children because you don't want them to make noise, you're holding them. Fantastic! You're part of the amal and you're accepted by Almighty. Wallah, maybe because of these children, Allah will easily accept her because they are masumi. Children are sinless, Habibi. They are masumi. So don't worry, my dear sister. You are sorted, inshallah. Zakallah, Sheikh. We have another question from the ladies. She says, um, my husband doesn't pray salah. I am worried that our children will pick this up. He thinks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too merciful and will forgive him. Uh, and he feels that he doesn't have to pray to be successful. Uh, she says, I feel if we lose, our, I feel if he continues this, we will lose our wealth and get more tests if he continues. So, is it a news you are giving or a question you ask? Uh, no, I understand, I understand. <laughs> you smashed it. No, no, this is uh, very important and of course, not something to belittle, you know. I have few practical tips I can share here, inshallah. So, number one, I will say to the sister, may Allah bless you and protect you. The fact that you are asking this question shows consciousness. And this consciousness, inshallah, will help you slowly but surely guide your husband. Don't get tired. Be patient. Don't get tired. That's my first practical tip. Second tip, I think the husband needs to be engaged more. You know, you can get hold of someone be it a scholar or somebody with a good understanding of religion, just to engage the husband a little bit. Definitely Allah is so merciful. Definitely. We don't disagree. But the mercy of Allah is of different levels. We have a rahmatul rahmaniyya, we have a rahmatul rahimiyya. The one that your husband is talking about is talking of only Rahman. Today, non-Muslims are billionaires in this world. There are murderers who are billionaires in this world. <laughs> Everybody is benefiting from Rahman. So my dear brother, husband of our dear sister, it's not about Rahman. We want to get Rahim. Rahim is the most important. Rahim. So Rahman is what? Everybody who doesn't have too much money, you can get universal credit. That's Rahman, universal credit. No, no, I want Rahim, I want to work harder so that I'm away from universal credit. <laughs> so Rahim is very, very important. The more effort you make in the way of Allah, the more Allah brings peace of mind in your life. Sukun. So don't get tired, my dear sister. Keep working hard, but seek intervention of others so that the husband can be engaged more. And then the last practical tip I will give, dua. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salah. Wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Keep making dua, my dear sister. This is the dua of Prophet Ibrahim. Allah soften the heart of my husband. Wallah, don't give up. Eventually, something will happen, inshallah. Asan. Sheikh, Sheikh, somebody has asked that um, you talked about the first condition that for somebody whose amal will not be accepted on Laylatul Qadr is his relationship with his parents. Somebody has asked that if my parents have passed away and they were unpleased with me, what should I do? Solid, man. Solid, man. This solid question. So the same question can be applied to the rest of the conditions. Sili Rahim. One, see, was a pain to his family members and they are no more in this world. Islam is amazing. There is still a way. There is still a way. It's not a gone case. You can undo it. 
You know what do you do? If they are buried in the same city you live, visit them. Visit their graves and offer some fatia. Surat al-Ikhlas. Make dua. If they are not, fine. If you know where they are, you can send someone, please go visit this grave and make some dua. Number two, do kari khair in their name. Donate. Said, may the reward of this donation go to this. My parents, you know, I wronged. I, I was a pain to them in my, in, when they were alive. Number three, you do rakat salah, two rakat. He said, may the hadiyah of these two rakat go to my parents. Somebody is going ziyara. said, please make ziyara for my parents. I was a thorn to my parents. Allah will accept, inshallah. So it's not a gone case completely. You can do something in their names and definitely. Or you can come and sponsor one night iftar. Why not? I don't know how much he said. Lester Birmingham is a lot, man. Uh, when I heard the, the money, I said, wow, khuda. But it's a blessing, you know, it's a blessing. Ramadan comes with his blessings. So you can sponsor half iftar, and inshallah, in their names, and whoever eat the food, they get commission in their life of Barzah. Yeah, of course, of course. That's a good one, man. He said, we don't we have a tradition that one may be obedient to his parent while they are alive and after they depart from this world, he becomes disobedient. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Sile Rahim doesn't stop upon the death of a person. It continues. So you need to visit the graves of your parents. You need to do kar khair on their behalf. You need to remember them in their duas. You don't cut off completely because they are no more in this world. It doesn't work out that way. You need to keep on until the day Azarail knocks your house. You know how many times Azarail knocks every house every day? Huh? He's saying five. How many? No, no, not three. You are right, man. Five, man. Azarail every day, of course, his agent, he's, it's a one by like, but he has agents. Every day, the angel of death or his agent knocks the door of every person five times. Alhamdulillah, we've been lucky today. <laughs> and I hope we remain lucky like this, inshallah. Otherwise, there are thousands of people Jibrail knocked first time. they all gone, man. <laughs> and some fifth time, gone. I think we are lucky, inshallah, we remain lucky until the end of Ramadan, man. We have a question from the floor. Just wanted you to expand on something you were kind of speaking about earlier. M quite a few people might be in a situation where their parents might be divorced. You might not be speaking to one side or might not be speaking to the other, or it might be from parents to children. They might not have spoken for, let's say, five years, ten years, so on. Let's say one forgiven the other, maybe the other hasn't. How would you... Um, kind of expand on that in a way. No, 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 definitely. So you, as a son or daughter, whenever you find yourself in such a situation, okay, the best way is not to take sides. Absolutely. Unless if, may God forbid, the other one, excuse my word, is animal. Animal simply means what? There is no humanity anymore. It's just abusive, you know, exposing the other in danger. I pray that Allah guide the person, yeah? Obviously, in this case, one will take side in defense of the other person. You understand? But otherwise, if it's some of the normal reasons as to why people divorce, or no, this type of a reason, but now things are dealt with, maybe in a court of law or wherever, your duty is to make sure you bridge the gap between the two. It's very, very important. So it's not always the case that one must take a side, unless if it's totally beyond your control, where you need to ensure that justice is done. Then of course, I have to take. Otherwise, Allah will question me on the day of Qiyamah. Otherwise, the normal reasons, no, he's not been treating me well, she's not been treating me well. Okay, But 
But don't take side. Try not to. The match field? Ah, uh, that's a good question. So, obviously, it's a big sin. It's a great sin when parents abandon their children. I mean, there are situations whereby when children were young, parents never bothered. Either one or the two of them. Obviously, when a child grows, it's, it's very difficult. In this case, Islam doesn't pressurize you. You need to go. Depending on the reason as to why you were abandoned. You know what you feel in. You understand. Islam said, take it easy. Take it easy. You are not forced. In that case, nothing to worry about, really. Yeah, absolutely. We have another question. Somebody asks, is it a coincidence that Laylatul Qadr coincides with the Shahadat of Imam Ali, alayhi salam? Definitely, definitely. It's Allah's plan. Because narration says, Man arafa Fatima fakada adraka laylatul qadr. Whoever knows Fatima will find and benefit from laylatul qadr. It's about wilaya. Meaning there is no ibadah without the wilaya of a ahlil bayt. So yes, it's a big thing. All these amal we do, I'm not saying every one of them, but most of it are from the Ahlul Bayt. Alayhi salat wa salam. The Laylatul Qadr itself, Ali Bayt taught us, these nights are the Laylatul Qadr. So we need the guidance from Ahlul Bayt to be able to worship Allah in a true sense of worshiping Allah. So therefore, it's a night of wilaya and it's a night of obudiyah lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. Yeah, so they go hand in hand. Somebody, somebody had asked regarding what you talked about the ruh, how you talked about the ruh and malaika. Yeah. Somebody asked, how can I use the ruh to help increase in my spirituality? And please, can you elaborate and advise yeah. on the types of ruh that you mentioned? So we have different types of ruh and of different levels. You have different type of ruh. And these rules are of different level. We have a ruhul iman. You have the ruh of iman. You are a believer. I'm a believer. Maybe your fathers worked very hard. That's why you are a believer. So because of that, Allah sent that ruh al iman. We have another ruh, which takes a person to the highest level of spirituality. But that, for you to get that, you need to make efforts. Without effort, Allah will not send that through. So on the night of Qadr, you will have a ruh next to you. How do you ensure that the ruh continues? Ya Allah, I pledge from tonight, I'm going to try my level best to take my love for you to the next level. So you begin with your daily prayers. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, Ramadan, all of us try to pray on time. Now, are you going to pledge Allah after Ramadan? You will continue with your salat. Some build their love for salat al layl in the holy month. Are you going to continue with that? During the holy month, we are mindful not to harm or offend anyone. Am I going to continue with that? So when you have that mindset on the night of Qadr, and you continue pushing slowly but surely, Allah wa ta'ala will send you that row. To strengthen you. Quran says it. Those who strive in us, we will guide them on our way. So I need to strive to get. You don't want to stick to only the ruh of Iman because everybody is mu'min. I want to go to that ruh of Yaqeen so I can get to that ruh of Nafsul Mutma'inna. And that is the effort. So inshallah, let's all try to make effort, inshallah. And inshallah, if you can, this is of course to those who can, don't forget namaz ishab. Salat al-layl. Don't forget it. Wallah. Inshallah, tomorrow I will indicate more on that. Any secret, any secret of servitude you want to feel is through Salat al layl Salat al layl 
there is no optional act in Islam that receives more emphasis than Salat al layl in Quran. That's why Allah made it wajib on Prophet. Salat al layl You stress in life? Salat al layl Things are not going well in your life? Salat al layl Wallah, you will be shocked. And so if you want that spiritual elevation, best of the best, Salat al -Layf. And you'll never go wrong, I promise you. And you know, you can do the shorter forms. The shorter, it's 11. Obviously, you have eight rakat and shafi and water. For whatever reason, you can. I'm not encouraging that, but we have it in our fiqh. For whatever reason, you can. You start slow, baby steps. You just, you can do two. And then you do shafi'i and witr. Or not at all. You do your shafi'i and witr. You do four. Then shafi'i and witr. Start slow on your pace. If you are somebody who, who, who mashallah, loves to sleep. Because there are people, mashallah, they are blessed. When they start snoring, man. So, somebody asked me in Birmingham. I, I hope they are not listening. Don't worry, man. So he said, Mawlana Sheikh. Because I had a question and answer before, Mawlana. Say, for example, I wake up for Daku. Daku in East Africa. Daku, you know, it. you're more East African than Birmingham. I wake up for Sahar, Suhur. Mashallah, I eat him and I go quick, Salah. Ta 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 fajir. Within a twinkle of an eye, I'm done, Sheikh. Then <laughs> I go to bed, I knock out. The only time I wake up is Maghrib. <laughs> How is my fasting, Sheikh? So Allah, your fasting is okay, bro. <laughs> but obviously you skip the Zohar and Asr, but your fasting is okay. You just have to pay back. <laughs> so you can do that. But So if you are someone who is really, because some people alhamdulillah, they can't sleep. So after Isha, you can do your Salat al layl Because best time is to do later. The closest to Fajr is better. But after Isha, you do, and then you knock out. But make sure you wake up for Fajr. <laughs> but at some point, I do Namaz Isha, and I wake up. But Wallah, the secret, as I said tomorrow, I will expand on that, how Imam Ali did it. The secret of everything in spirituality is Salat al layl Wallah. All the headache of spirituality if you can manage Salat al layl Wallah, you sort it. You don't worry much about things. You would see you're calm. You relax. Big issue in life. Everybody is jumping left and right. You relax. You calm. Salat al layl Baba. Imam Hussain, on the eve of Ashura, why he asked the enemies, don't engage us with the battle on the ninth. Let's wait the next day. That night, they were all praying. To such an extent, Imam Hussein will say to Zainab, when you wake up at night, remember me in your du'as. In your namaz shab, Zainab, remember me. Especially, you know, the youth, well, I know it's hard for you sometimes. Life is very difficult. I, I, I do understand that. It's not easy. You have so many challenges, our youth. And as I said, I'm really inspired by less the majority of people who are attending youth. Even here, I look at here, I look at here, mashallah. You know, if you want to master life, salat al Wallahi. You want to master life. You mean no? You want to have life under control. Salat al -Lay. So try. We are in demand of Ramadan. Try. If you go home now, do Shafi and wait the two and one. Start today. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Night of Qadr. Try here and there when the program is finished. Before or after Joshua al Kabir, if you stay, me, you know, Salat al try. You will never regret, I promise you. And you can make your own readings on this Salat al in Islam. You will never regret, Habibi. So if you want that ruh, my best strategy is Salat al Are we done now? I will give you last. 
story, and then we're done. Okay, there's a question there. And then I will conclude with a nice story. Salam Habibi. Uh, so my question is about Alim al Arwa. Uh, so what is the connection of Alim al Arwa to this world and the next world as well? And I want to know like what Alim al Arwa exactly was like. Did our souls live a life that? Because I know we made a promise there, but did we like live a life how we are? Yeah, I wasn't there. I can't remember well, no, what like, the last what, time what's I made our a understanding on it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You I, got me there. You have a very. The question is very. Is is too mystical? The question. Okay. Excellent question. Yeah. So, obviously, it's cool. Quranic injuncture. Quran, there is an ayah. I can't remember the ayah, but if I remember, I will share the ayah. You know, there, there was a point. Allah asked ask a question. Allah to be rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? And we all say, Bala, yes. But I can't remember. Can you remember, bro? Can you remember the, when the angels came to you and say, is Allah not your Lord? Can you remember? You can't. <laughs> Give him the mic. Is there an ayah in the Quran where Allah mentions that? Yeah, it's an ayah. Is, yeah? yeah, it's an ayah. That means it did happen. It, it's about when? We might not remember it, but it <laughs> has happened. But what's the connection for it to coming into this? Yeah, place? I will, inshallah, I will, that's the question I will answer. So, we, we all never remembered. I don't think all, anyone here will remember. And of course, we believe the first souls to say yes were the souls of the Panjitan Park and that of the rest of the Ahl al-Bayt and Prophets of Allah and the Messengers. Now, this is the point, Habib. Before coming to this world, all of us, all, no exception, Muslim, non-Muslim, this is our Islamic tradition, our souls are created for many years. Many years. I was reading one tradition, they said 200 years. Souls created. What is soul? Light of Allah. Nur. So your light was created. If it was the only light, nobody will commit a sin. You know why we commit a sin? This. This miskin body. Because body is material, mortal. So that light was there. When mom conceives, narration says within three months, and there are other narration different, the light is brought. That's why Allah said, I blew my spirit. It's not from mom. It's not from dad. Mom, dad, they have their duty. But this comes from Allah. That roh, which was created many years before. And that is the chief component of our existence in this world. So in this world, this is nothing, bro. Now the connection I'm going to explain here. Yeah? So you have a body. You have an akal, intellect. And you have that role. Now, what's the role of the body? It's to carry on whatever you want. You who? I will indicate to that. Akal. What's the role of akal? It's to analyze, to tell you this is good, this is bad. Akal doesn't take a decision from the Islamic perspective. What takes decision? The nafs. So, philosophers such as nafs, kal, roh, is the same. Philosophers try to give difference between the three, but this is internal existence. It's not external existence. But mystically, they are all the same, bro. Because otherwise, I'm I can stress you with the philosophical polemics. Ro, what is ro? What is kalb? You know, but I don't want to go that. Mystically, it's all the same. So, what is the role here? It takes decision. That's why Quran said, Fa Allahamaha. It is inspired with something. Goodness and evilness. So that's the connection. Allah now brings it to the soul, to the body. And it joins the body. If it's only roh, Jannah straight, bro. Where does the choice come from? So why we can't remember 
Because it's only ruh. There is no body. Ruh is always making istighfar and praises of Allah. So that's why angels, they are solid. Man. They don't have a problem. So there's a big connection. Now what I any need to do is to make it more cleaner. And not to make it dirty. And they said this rule is God. And that's why Allah says, O oh, the son of Adam, my heaven and earth are not enough for me to sit, to settle. But the kalb of my servant is enough for me to settle there. So that rule, go God, Allah, Allah, Quran, Salah, Wilaya. That's it. Today, look at the issue of Palestine I was mentioning yesterday. Do people have a heart in the world? Because lack of God. Even Christians who have God, you see, they're standing for the justice. Non-Muslims who have sort of God, they're standing for justice. Why some can't see? There is no God. Akuna God, Hapa, there is no God here. There's no God. So, Ruh, I love your question. We can discuss this more and more. Ruh is so important. Why are we having majlis like, struggling every day? We want to take, get rid, we want to take good care of this, man. Otherwise, this is solid, man. Mashallah, you dress nice clothes. Koshali, everybody dress nicely. Ladies know better. I don't know Koshali, Mashallah. You know, there is wedding, you dress nicely. Before you come, even the young guys, they put a gel here to make Mashallah. There is one youth in Birmingham. I said, look, I think every day you go to the bathroom with a gel. <laughs> yeah, he said, Sheikh, I want to look good, man. I said, to look good for who? You know, people, Sheikh, I want to look good, man. There is a guy, you know, I used to teach him, but I, I, I'm still teaching. I used to teach him in Madrasa. So every week, it used to be different haircut. <laughs> every week, wallah, kasamti. Religiously, this guy, you know, different haircut. And I used to teach every Sunday. I said, oh, bro, what's going on here? He said, no, shak, shak. Every Saturday, I go to King's Heat. I have a barber. I pay 30 pounds to look good. <laughs> Younger. So, physically, we look good. Challenge is here. That row. I think here we are doing well. I mean, there are non-Muslims who look even better than us physically, have you been? There are people. <laughs> so we need to look after this one. This one is where the challenge is. And that is why we have Laylatul Qadr. Cleanse it, but try. Are we done? Yeah, people are waiting for the pizza, so we need to finish. I have a conclusion, then we finish. So this is my conclusion. Inshallah, let's all try and make the best out of Laylatul Qadr. I want to conclude with this story. Maybe some of you heard this story, but it's a very important spiritual story which will inspire all of you, inshallah, to keep night vigil. So, you've been to Mashhad. I'm sure many of you have been to Mashhad. So, in the Haram of Imam al rada there is a mosque named after a queen. Her name is Goharishad. The mosque of Goharishad. Any of you have been to Mashhad? If you have not seen, they ask. You know this lady? She was a queen. Then one youth fell in love with her. But he didn't know what to do. So he approached her. He said, will you marry me? He just approached her. She said, on condition. The condition is, I want you to go for 40 days and night, recite Quran, and every day you fast. Once you've done that, come, I will accept your proposal. I will get money. Baba, this guy, Something. he was zoomed into that. So he started the ibadah. 40 days, Quran, fasting. <laughs> this is a true story. After 40 days, he didn't go back to her. He left her. That's the end of the story. I'm joking. <laughs> After 40 days, he didn't go. She was waiting patiently. Will he come? He won't come. Will he come? He won't come. 
He was not coming. So she sent for him. Well, I guess what happened? She sat. She said, but I gave you a work to do for 40 days. And I was expecting you to come back. What happened? He said, yes, I did the job. He said, first, when I came to you, my eyes were on something. Now I found God. I found something better. What's the garret? Well, now when you hold unto God, God shows you things, man. He touches your heart. And you feel the spark. So let's, inshallah, go full force on the night of Qadr. And with the hope that Allah touches our hearts. And inshallah, we become his true servant. And we pray, Marhumin, may Allah forgive them, inshallah. May we be blessed on the night of Qadr. Whatever we are prepared to ask Allah on the night of Qadr, may Allah fulfill those things on our behalf, inshallah. And may we be forgiven of our shortcomings before the second night of Qadr, inshallah. And mistakes we might have, you know, made during the month. May Allah forgive us and amend those mistakes. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah all. We thank you all for attending and we hope you all benefited. There will be a bowl that will be passed around in the ladies and gents. We just ask if you can make any donations to help run these programs. It will be greatly appreciated. Jazakallah. Salawat. Brothers and sisters, uh, please bear with us a few minutes. Uh, the pizzas are on the way, inshallah, we'll be here very soon. <laughs>